The aviation sector in Nigeria has been making headlines, particularly this This Day newspaper uh, headline, uh, with respect to uh, air peace flight to London sparking a price war among foreign airlines has led to quite a lot of uh, debate. There is, of course, also the aviation minister, uh, Festus Kayamo, SAN, saying that Emirates might be returning to Nigeria soon, soon in quote. And uh, also, uh, the Gumajo family, um, of course, suing the, uh, apparently suing the helicopter company, of course, that had that tragic crash uh, right before the Super Bowl that took the lives of uh, Mr. Gumajo and also Dr. Herbert. We will get into that as well. Who better than uh, Mr. Alex Mwuba, President, Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association of Nigeria, joining us to discuss all things uh, aviation. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you so Good much morning. for joining us. Thank you for having me on the show. And happy holidays to everyone. <laughs> I hope people have returned to work. You're back at work. <laughs> yeah, we, we work the entire time, you know. So I think in Katsina, they, they call the holiday today. So they're, they're off for the entire, uh, the rest of the week. Yeah. Um, gosh, so, so much to... Um, to kick through, um, shall we begin with Airpiece going to that right. article in uh, this day? Did it start a price war? Because we had a bit of the debates here. What, what, what do you think? Where, where do you stand uh, on there that? There is no price war. I think it makes for great stories to be talking about price wars. What Airpiece essentially did was force down the fares on in the on the route. Uh, fares are down by 60%. Airlines used, foreign airlines used to say that uh, because of the exchange rate of the Naira, which we've seen a decline, and thankfully, you know, in Nigeria, when dollar goes up, everything goes up. When it goes down, they nothing goes down. Right. But the airpiece has forced these fares to come down now, and so we have lower fares by 60, as much as 60%. So if there's no price war, people are just adjusting to the reality that there's a new entrant offering a better pricing option for consumers. And there are many reasons why airpiece will naturally be cheaper than other carriers. Okay, okay. You want to touch on one or two? Well, of fine. That's fine. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, typically, uh, premium airlines, British Airways and Virgin, have always been known to fail from the front to the back. So if you go to book a BA flight, business class will be sold at first, then business class would follow before even economy. And so that has always been the case. That's the premium market. And then the rest of us who don't want to spend so much money <laughs> on BA and VS go through Europe, we go through Kenya, East Africa, we go through North Africa to get better fares. And so what Airpiece has done essentially is enter into the market with a direct fare at the price of going through these secondary markets. Uh -huh. And we don't ask ourselves what happens or what was the real benefit of that. For example, we've had recent stories of what Nigerians have faced going through Turkey. We've had issues of uh, what's done with, happened to people carrying currency to Ethiopia. So all of these inconveniences are lost in the fact that Airpiece has lowered the fares and made fares generally lower and made it better for Nigerians. And it's a direct flight. You don't have to transit through many of these countries and spend 10 hours. If you look, if you book some of these fares, they'll tell you 21 hour connection. Wow. Now it's just a matter of go to the airport, arrive in London, begin your day or continue to whatever destination you want. And they've done it at a price point that removes the cost of going to these secondary airports. And so there's no fare war. British Airways will always sell its premium fares. Uh, Virgin will always sell its premium fares. Uh, the airlines that are, and you know, the reality of it is that 65% of the people that are going to the UK don't go with British Airways or Virgin. Okay. They all go with secondary airlines, and that means going on a transit flight, 10 hours to 21 hours, whereas with Airbus, it's a straight-out flight at the cost of going through those. So there's no, there's no price war, and there's no fear that Airbus will be pushed out of this market. All right. Thank you for the break. See, this is why we had you on the show, to break these things down. Um, we've also been talking a lot about supports right. for the domestic airlines. What does support mean? To, to I think you. I think that uh, Airpiece has missold its product. First, it sold it on the basis of price. If Airpiece had come into the market at the same price as the secondary carriers that, that took you to these transit airports, they would make a lot more money without this call for patriotism. Uh, patriotism is really a patriotism to the pocket. Yeah. Uh, Nigerians shouldn't be told to support Airpiece because it's Nigerian. Yeah. They should be told to support Airpiece because it makes sense. It saves them money. It makes for a more direct flight. And so the patriotism should be to your pocket. And that's always been what you, you, this is a show on economics, and so the economics of it is that fares are much lower, flights are more direct, and so it is a much better option for consumers, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, also uh, the discussion around outside of airpiece can this scale to other airlines? Do you, do you see any other airlines having the capacity to? do what they're doing because we're only talking about one airline here, yeah, international flights, yeah, correct. Yeah, so you know, uh. 
This is behind the scenes. But right. United Nigeria is gearing up to go to North America. Okay. Uh, Ibom Air is scaling. They're, they're doing very well on the regional routes. And they, they're a very progressive company. So they'll start out, they started out in Nigeria. They're going into Ghana. They're expanding to West Africa and ultimately expanding to Europe. So basically for the consumer, we have a greater choice of Nigerian carriers. And there are some benefits as well. Uh, I read these funny things saying that Dan Gote and Dale Nuyema have saved the Naira. And so you have to ask yourself, how much money have people spent on these carriers to do it that way? I think it's the CBN governor that's doing everything to save the Naira. But yeah. they're contributing. Mm. Uh, you're paying for these things in Naira. Not only are you paying for them in Nigeria, when they sell tickets in the UK, or ultimately in the US or in China, there's dollar inflows. The only challenge you have with that at the at the risk of being saying I'm here to sell their pieces, yeah. the fact that 75% of these airplane flights will be flown by a foreign carrier who will be paid in dollars, and that's an outflow from the economy. So if you look, 25% is Nigerian supported, 75% it's outside Nigeria, that's a wrong strategy. But I know for a fact also that airpiece is looking and restructuring and reorganizing its international operations. So thank you for the insights. Um, if we now say your United uh, Air, um, United Nigeria, uh, E bomb, all these airlines are also going regional. If do we get um, the does this eliminate the regional carrier debate? You know we had you on last time talk about <laughs> Nigeria Air. Um, you talk you talked about the capacity of the domestic airlines to be yes. able to. So then we don't no, need I it anymore. The, the, minister, the minister of yeah. aviation at the time said yeah. Nigerian Airlines lacked capacity. Right. He's gone now, and Nigerian Airlines are demonstrating capacity. Uh -huh. And so you have to refer to Hadi Sirika, right? That, well, I said the former minister. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would not like to personalize it. <laughs> certainly, the former certainly. minister. Certainly. But you've seen the other track. The new minister has yeah. gone abroad. He's sitting with international carriers. He's sitting with leasing companies and saying, the challenges we are facing, most airlines in the world do not buy airplanes, and Nigerian airlines have to buy airplanes because the options are not available for them to lease. So the minister has gone to the international carriers, he's met with Airbus. Ultimately, I believe he'll also meet with Boeing, he'll meet with Embraer and other, and even possibly the Chinese carriers, because there may be an option for us there. Uh, but the minister has taken the extra step of saying, I'm going to lead the charge. And so he's gone to Airbus, he's had discussions with them, he's had discussions with le leasing companies. He's come up with proposals because their greatest concern has been, when we lease airplanes to Nigerian carriers and we try to get them back, can we? And oftentimes, we have the history of not being able to give those airplanes back and use the courts to tie down the airplanes here to keep them from going back and we continue to utilize them. So he's pushing in his last statement for arrangements which I have issues with. I've already okay. said I have issues yeah, with. Yeah. Uh, for arrangements with the courts that expedite the return of these assets. It's not that easy. You know? yeah. The courts are really supposed to be independent. We've become more, even more lawless when we enter into private arrangements with the courts and tell them this is what, how they should contact, conduct legal business. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Government, uh, government intervention in the markets and so on and so forth. Um, um, okay, so on the another matter um, with respect to uh, the uh, aviation uh, sector is, of course, um, I guess this, and I know it's a legal thing, but I just wanted to pick your brain here. The lawsuits um, uh, against the helicopter with that tragic crash, the Ogunjo right. family. Right. The, the NTSB hasn't completed its report yet, has it? So how, how are you saying? You you've, know? A, you've answered the question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you've answered the question. Okay. Uh, and, and it's most unfortunate that uh, that accident happened. Yeah. The accident took my sister as well. My sister is Herbert Wigwi's wife. And my nephew, uh, uh, Cheesy, is my, it's also, uh, it's my nephew, my direct nephew. Oh, born in my house, that. actually, yes. Wow. So sorry, that so accident sorry. affects me personally. Yeah. But I think it is, uh, the Ogumbanjo is a very established legal family, so they probably know what they're doing. Uh, on our part, I think it will be most appropriate to wait for the NTSB to conclude its investigation. That investigation will indicate the liability of the uh, helicopter operator. We've seen they've had a history of issues, mm -hmm. and so it is presumptuous to, for us as a family now to go to court and start a legal matter when the facts are not fully disclosed. And nobody can investigate this matter under the, other than the Nigerian Transportation Safety Board. So yeah. from that point of view, we are patient. We will wait, hopefully. You know, when I say we, there are other family members who would have an input into this yeah. process and may decide to do something differently. But from my point of view, it's something that will require us to wait for the accident investigation. This could take as much as two years. Right. So nobody's running away. Nothing is going to happen in the interim. And so we, we grieve, we mourn, we are faced by the difficulty of what happened, but we have to be a bit strategic as to the actions that we take and the timing of those actions.
Sorry for your loss. I had no idea of the, the, the connection there. <laughs> That's thank you. okay. Thank That's you. why I haven't been on TV for a while. Right, right. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you, thank you for sharing that. And thank, thank you for coming yes. on. Um, okay, so um, the matter of Emirates, yes. um, the uh, Minister Camel um, hinted that he didn't give a firm date or anything like that, said that sometime soon they might be coming back. Is that because the backlogs have been reading? Why, why do you think that is? What's the, the, the positive outcome of Emirates coming back here as to why that could possibly well, how happen? How can we talk about positives when Emirates hasn't come back? The president himself went to the UAE and announced that Emirates will be returning within a week. Emirates didn't. Right. Emirates is very fond of making a mockery of us. Uh, they, they say they'll do things at the highest level with the highest level of officials and they don't do that. And I don't even see what we need to celebrate about Emirates returning. Uh, what have we missed? I'm, you see, I'm one of those people in the aviation industry, but I'm not particularly keen about why we actually go to some of these places. Yeah. I mean, we go shopping in Dubai to buy stuff made in India and China. Mm. Uh, and Epi Epis goes to, in goes to China and has India on the radar. So are we really missing Emirates? I don't know if we are. I don't know why the need for any celebration of the return of Emirates, but if they come, great. If we patronize them, great. I believe that when they do return, Epis will also return to the, that direction. And like I did before Emirates departure, I flew air peace and I encourage all Nigerians, not just for patriotism, but for the benefit of our economy. Emirate, uh, if you look at it, Emirates at its best would employ 10 Nigerians. Mm. Uh, air peace employs over 4,000 Nigerians. So who do we want to support for our own benefit, for our own economy? Everything happening to us in Nigeria is happening to our economy. And we have to work collectively to heal our economy. So I'm not appealing to anyone's patriotism on the basis of business. Uh, patriotism that we're calling for also requires somebody to make money from that patriotism. Right. So it's really a business. But we have to be sensible. Uh, the money is coming back to us. It's helping our economy. We're saving money. We're going direct. We're avoiding the kinds of harassment we face at these transit airports, whether it's in Yemen or Iran or Iraq or Turkey or, or Ethiopia or mm. whatever the case may be. So we just have to be more sensible, not necessarily more patriotic. Uh, Mr. Alex, I could talk aviation with you for a full hour. I really appreciate you coming on and, and touching on these uh, pressing issues that are making headlines everywhere. The President's Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association of Nigeria, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.